Bird, 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 bird. Feeling, I'm feeling spry. I'm going to see if this is the time that I could do this in one take. I swear it's been, it's been a month, month and a half since I've been able to do this intro. I mean, you wouldn't know that on your end, but I usually have to hit stop, start, stop, start, start over, 15, 16 takes. It's such a pain in the ass. So let's just see what happens. Hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. It is the 30th of January. We made it through January. I mean, you know, for the most part. And uh, my Patreon patrons, we had a great Zoom room last Thursday. That lasted from, I always schedule them from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And I think that one lasted till 1130. <clears throat> it's kind of funny. The, the, more, the more everybody relaxes, asks questions, and whatever they happen to be, you know, their libation of choice kind of kicks in. Then you get a lot more questions and answers. So we, we solved many of the problems of the world last Thursday. So my Patreon patrons, my number one oldest sponsor ever. They also have, they also have the, uh, the ability to go to Tier 2. We, we, we've installed a Tier 2, and that is Hunting Dog Talk. It's just a once a month, but quite honestly, it's going to be two times a month. 20-minute, 30-minute little rant and rave on Ron. And, boy, I got some stuff to rant and rave about. It's coming. It's coming. Um, so whatever, whatever, whatever your poison is, or just listen to it like you normally listen to it and don't join Patreon. That's fine. I love you all. I love every one of you. I just love you girls more. I love my title sponsor, Pike Gear. Um, new stuff, new shirts. If you're coming to Pheasant Fest, you're going to see some new Pike Gear shirts. I'll be wearing one of them. He's even going to get the lo my logo on there, which is pretty damn cool. Brent will be there. We're going to have a great booth. Um, if you if you want to kick the tires, if you want to feel the fabric, if you really want to know what it's like, come out to Pheasant Fest. Brent's going to have a, a, a double booth out there, and all of his uh, his crew and his cronies, and of course, I'm one of his cronies. Um, but all of his gear is going to be on display out there for you to try, to you to buy, to you to uh, whatever you want to do, just see how it fits. You know, just put a pair and say, yep, I like the way that fits. And I guarantee you're going to like the way that fits. Boss Yacht Shells, they're going to be there. And I still haven't got an answer if Boss is going to be wrapped up inside the booth with me yet. I don't know. If they aren't, there might be a certain shotgun company out of Sheridan, Wyoming, that might be inhabiting the booth. What I'd really love to have is, you know, a shotgun company and – a shot shell company. Talk about a complimentary duo. My God. Onyx will be there. They won't be in my booth. But if you really want to, if you're just that, the last 15 people on the planet that don't have Onyx on your phone so you can know where you go, know where you've been, set a pin, go to the Onyx booth. It's not going to be far away from me. And meet the guys, meet the girls, and watch, watch them work it. It's like a Ouija board. It is. I mean, you can use Onyx for everything. It does everything except shoot. It does everything except shoot the birds for you. It really does. Same like Boss Shot Shells. Boss Shot Shells, they've done everything they can to make sure you can show the birds who's boss. And uh, you know what? You know what they talk about inflation. It might be time to just put your orders in. Don't be ashamed. You're not going to be able to buy them there. Um, no one. They're not going to be selling. They're not going to be selling shotgun shells there. They, they wouldn't be able to bring it. They'd have to bring a semi-load in, and I, I doubt if they have a semi-load right now to, to sell there. But come there and meet the guys. Meet, meet you, you'll love it. You, you're just going to love it. Come, to, come and see all my sponsors at Pheasant Fest. It's going to be so much fun. Walton's, like, you know, Pike's got everything, everything for hunting. Boss has got everything you need for, for gunning. Onyx has got everything you need for navigation, you know, getting your way around, finding boundaries. And Walton's has what? Everything but the meats. I know, I know. I need another tagline, but I like the tagline. Think about it. You tur turn your game processing into, take it up to another level with Walton's. 
Same with your dog food. If you're not feeding Purina and you're like, Ron, please, I'm, feel, I'm feeding Poop and Noop or I'm feeding, you know, uh, wildness, whatever, whatever you're feeding, okay? When you, when you grow up and you get ready, if you, when you're ready to feed the food that feeds the champions on this planet, you'll feed Purina Pro Plan. When you're ready to put your dog in the safest kennel ever made. You could read some reviews. You could talk about crash testing. Only Gunner Kennels has a five-star crash rating under extreme conditions. Like, right, it, I, I think, well, I guess it's nice because if you got in a crash, your dog's got a better chance of surviving. The only thing it doesn't have is airbags. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if next year to have an airbag in the kennel. I'm just, just throwing that out there. Addison, Macy, Emily, you know. Just, hey, why not? Anyway, Gunner Kennels, they're not going to be there, but they're going to be there with me. They're sending me a bunch of koozies. We're going to have we're gonna have two. We're going to have a medium and an intermediate kennel there so you can see them, feel them, close the doors, put your kids in them. If you're going to run to the bathroom, come over and put your kid in a Gunner Kennel. I'll keep them safe until, the, you know, until you get back from the bathroom. And on Sunday, we will have a Gunner Kennel food crate there that's specifically... Well, it's going to have food for my dog. I'm going to have Tagus there with me. But the Gunner Kennel food crate will be for the raffle tickets. We're going to raffle off those two Gunner Kennels on Sunday. So pay attention. Pay attention. If you're not going to be there on Sunday, you better have somebody that has your ticket that's still going to be there on Sunday because if you get your name called, I'm, I'm not walking out of that Omaha Convention Center with two Gunner Kennels. Some of you listeners are. Garmin. Garmin, I'll have all my Garmin gear there. If you have any questions on Garmin, I'll help you the most I can. It is the best in canine training and navigation. You know, they wouldn't put it in planes and boats if it wasn't the best, right? You, you, don't, you don't see any of the other brands that make radar equipment, navigation for planes, because they don't know how. They just don't know how. Canine Athlete makes all kinds of supplements for your, food, for your dog, from new dog right down to... Hydrate and recover, probiotics. You want to you want to step up just that everyday extra, just like we take care of ourselves with a a, a smoothie shake or a or a energy drink. Okay, take care of your dogs like you take care of yourself with Canine Athlete. Brought to you by Wilderness Athlete, which is I will have samples at Pheasant Fest with that also. <laughs> what a surprise! W Hunting Supply. I cannot tell you that Jason and Buddy are going to be there. It's sad because they are the coolest guys. They have the best service in the industry for anything you need. Go to W D O U B L E U, capital letter U, hunting supply. Okay? Check out what they have and you will get the serve. You, you'll be like, uh, you'll feel like royalty the way they take care of you. You'll feel like they know you because they're houndsmen, they're dogmen. And not just houndsmen. You know, Jason's got a bird dog. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what kind. I'm not. Deck drawer system, they've got me. They've got some stuff for me to bring there. They're not going to have a booth, but they're trying to get me a little mini deck drawer system. So if you haven't seen a deck drawer system, I mean, if you're just just thinking about it, let's cross our fingers that deck can find me a little what they call a store model, so you can really see what it is I'm yakking about. Two giant drawers that fit in the bed of your truck. They don't break. They don't shake. They're watertight. You could put ice and beer in them in the summer. It doesn't matter what you put in them. It'll be there. It'll be safe. It'll, and you can lock it. You can, you can lock your beer up in there. You could. Um, yeah, absolutely. And shooting sports from magazine. People, places, guns, dogs, it's all I do. Everything about that magazine is everything about what I love. People, places, guns, dogs. The Upland Institute, of course, is my endeavor Justin McGrail's in my endeavor. And we are, well, we're going to be there. When you come to Pheasant Fest, we're going to have an extra booth, and we're going to have a big monitor up there. And if you haven't, if you've, if you've just been Upland Institute curious, you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can train the dog myself. You know what? Be a better trainer. Train your dog yourself. Go to Upland Institute. And right now, I would tell you, it's a perfect, perfect time of year to start messing around with the trained retrieve. I'm bringing all three dogs right here, right through the trained retrieve right now. 
uh, all different levels. It's with Zara. It was last year's I stopped, which is very much proof that you could start to train to retrieve and you can take a break. She didn't miss a step. She was right back to exactly where she was, holding, walking, going on and off the table. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's the time of year to do it. So come on out, see us. We will be there. I will be there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't think of another thing. Can, can you? I do. I do. This is, um, this is a little, this, well, I think most people listen to this show, and, I, and I'm not saying, I'm saying you can't, okay? I don't put, and you know me hysterically, I don't put things up on Facebook that are about dogs dying. Everybody, everybody kind of, anybody listens normally, so I got to quit saying everybody or anybody. People who listen frequently know that uh, right before Christmas, Taffy had lymphoma sarcoma, and we lost her at three and a half. And her best friend and kennel mate, the only other dog that was trusted with the run of the kennel, lets himself in and out at will, doesn't tear up a cushion, just the mainstay of my kennel for the last 12 years. Mr. Bravo, Mr. Bravo went out like a hero uh, last Sunday morning. Took himself a little walk out in the backyard, turned around. I was looking for him. He went right down. He went right down. Uh, heart attack or a stroke. Uh, you know, I, 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 have a, I don't have a hard time talking about it. What I have is a hard time describing to you how much that dog, his personality was so big. His heart was so big. His... Everything about that dog was big. You know, even his mouth was big. His jowls were big. His tail was long. He, he, you want to talk about, I, I said at one point, I said, somebody asked me um, if I was going to get a little, a little paw print of Taffy's paw, you know, from the, from the doctor. And I said, no. I said, her paw, her paw put up a, a little print in my heart a long time ago. Well, Bravos would crush your, crush your sternum. He had a big paw. It looked like, you know, when he, when he leave paw prints out, people think wolf, people, people's, people thought wolves were in the area. And I actually had a guy say that once. He said, did you see the size of those tracks out there? I said, oh, we're down that two track? I said, yeah, that's Bravo's. So Mr. Bravo, uh, my, he's been on, what, three episodes of Meat Eater, an episode of The Flush, um, countless banquets and outside events and people that have come over here. So uh, this episode is dedicated to one of my favorite all-time dog, all-time dog. And if I could say his name, because it's got so many letters and syllables, like D Comprehenda, Bree something, 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 it's just Bravo. So rest in peace, Bravo. I love you. I love you guys. And I love you girls, but I love Bravo more. Talk to you soon. Hey everybody, it's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. Uh, this is a this is a rare podcast for me because it's two fifty three in the afternoon, and Seth Leindecker, say I got that right, came over with his Brock Francais and four four different beers, five different beers. I uh, got yeah, more out there too. Well, so this this is actually a beer tasting episode. I've had a uh, I've had a, a shorts brew. A Shorts Brew Soft Parade. I've had, what was the seltzer that I hated, Seth? Uh, no, it was a cider. Cider. <laughs> Vandermill. Yeah. Totally roasted, which yeah. is a phenomenal cider. You just don't like ciders. Well, I, don't, I, I think just children like ciders, and you are much younger than me. <laughs> and I've got a Rogue River Brown Ale, which is excellent. Yep, that's the, from the Rockford Brewing Company right here in that's Rockford. Rockford? Yep. And yep. then you've got the Hef. The Hef. The Hef is a Hefeweiss. That's Frankenmuth. Frankenmuth. Frank mm-hmm. So like this is like a Michigan taste testing rare dog podcast. There, hey, there we go. Get, give everybody a little background to you before we get going so we know why we're talking here. Sure. Uh, I was on here a couple years ago talking about my Brock Francais. Um, it's a, it's a very rare bird dog that looks a lot like a German short hair, just a little smaller and a lot less stubborn. A lot less stubborn? Most of the time. Most of the time? You know, I, I see them 
when I do see them in a test, they're mm -hmm. from your kennel. <laughs> but Or my brother's. Or your yeah. brother's kennel. Or and if somebody calls me from out of town and writes me a letter to say, do you know anybody that breeds Brock friends? Like, yeah, I know. The guy. The guy. <laughs> how, how rare is this dog in the country? Um, when I got my first one, Eve, she was, I think, number 176 on the NAVDA registry. Right. Uh, I that's think we're at about 1,000 it's not 50 somewhere that's, that's in there. That's pretty decent. Yeah, under 2,000 NAVDA registered dogs. Right, right. And that's over 20 years. Yeah, they've been here since the 70s. Right. Who, who, we might have covered this, but I'm telling you, with Spotify, there's only 100 episodes on here. So, yeah. Who, who got this thing going here? Or do we know? Um, Michelle uh, Glinius up in Canada brought a dog in because he wanted um, a cooperative dog for banding Woodcock. He was looking for a banding dog. Yep. Well, how would they just find that dog, like, if they weren't here yet? I, I don't know how he found it. <laughs> okay. I, I know I found it, you know, um, a decade ago. Searching what dog will make me happy on Yes, on yes. It was Google. a very, <laughs> very narrow search down of, I would try to find the very best family dog that, that points, um, that has short hair. And I grew up with short hairs, and I, I love them. I yeah. really do. Yeah, you had them. Um, Mm -hmm. Long time. Yeah, I just I love them. I just don't need to own another one. Right. Um, so that that's how I came to find the Brock Francais. It has the short hair, has the temperament, and colorations are very. I mean, like yep. your your little pup here is nine months old. Yep. And I, I first thing I said to you was, I was like a little more short hair in the face until I really studied a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's got to throw people. It does. It certainly I mean, does. Most time when I'm walking around, people walk up to me and they're like, oh, I love your short hair puppy. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And I usually ask them, well, do you hunt? If they say no, I'm like, thanks, and right. keep walking. But if they say yes, then I go in to well, explain. Actually, this dog is. Yeah. yeah. And it was it, I, I, I would have, not. this is probably a stupid question, but I, you know, everybody knows I'm good with stupid questions. Was it something that the French did with the German short hair, or was it? The, just like the Germans develop that out of stuff, the French develop that out of stuff, or do you know? My understanding, and, and I'm not Craig. Right, but, right. You were not uh, Craig Koshik. Yes. Thank you, Craig, for writing that book. Yes. Yeah. But my understanding is uh, the Brock Francais is an older breed. Um, they, they have two different types of Brock Francais, the Gascony or Gascon and the Pyrenees. Um, it's kind of like the Brocco. They have yeah, the, a little bit. Uh, the what is it the Piedmont and the another one mm -hmm. but they're all yeah and the really split sad. is the, the Gascon is an older version and somebody wanted a smaller faster dog and that developed more in the Pyrenees mountains um, and it's my understanding that the, the Germans kind of used that stock and crossed hounds into them right and that's what made them bigger faster stronger and more stubborn yeah uh, <laughs> well, the hound would do it. The hound would do it. <laughs> I'll do it. Um, but so yeah, it's, it's my understanding they're they're the they're a slightly older breed than the than right. the German version. When I, when I meet people and they see Broncos, and I said, you know, they're one of the oldest breeds, and mm -hmm. people are like, well, maybe maybe they should have just quit <laughs> making them. Yeah. I mean, could, did they? What what made them keep breeding them? <laughs> right. But there's a there's a personality and there's a disposition to it. Is that yeah? Then, Absolutely. Um, yeah, I would say if, if you want to just a pure, like, I want to kill everything on the sun, you're probably one of German short hair. If yeah. you want a dog you, you love living with all the time because right. you can only hunt a month and a half out of the year. If you want the odds in your favor for the disposition side. Yeah, you, you'd call me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and to all my friends with short hairs out there, I, I've talked about Lisa's short hairs and the Carter's short hairs. I mean, there is, they're as calm as my Broncos. But that's not the, right. That's not the rule with German short hairs. With the American style, right. I would say the American style. They, they, you know, we amp, we tend to amp everything. Well, we out, do it right? with field trials. Yep. We do it with competition. Yep. Um, I saw a couple of short hairs in Florida years ago. Years ago, actually, at a Brocco gathering, mm -hmm. and they had a couple of AKC judges there, and they had short hairs. And I'm telling you, they were full grown short hairs, and they were probably no bigger than your pup right there. Oh wow. And I was like, that's, you know, I don't think that's... That's the standard. But see, like we do in America, you take something, you're like, I want to make it fit what I make, and right. kind of the hell with the breed standards sometimes. Yeah. And it, 
it's no fault of one breeder, but it does come through. Well, you know, how's is there a parent club that you guys are involved with? That yeah, Club Brock Francais of North America. Um, they hold the standard for for what that is. We we rewrote it um, versus the French one because the French one always compared to the uh, the Gascon. And that's hard to do because there's no Gascons here for us to visually compare it to. So they, they did reformat the, 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 standard the standard so that you could just look at a standalone dog and know what we're talking about right. versus trying to say, well, it's not this. And it must we be don't from the that. Gaston family. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, I'm not super active in that. Um, on, I'm familiar, not on the board anymore. Yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, they, they do a great job of... Um, helping breeders know what that standard is right, and getting right. the resources they need. Um, not that there's a ton of breeders out there, but no, there can't be. You know, no. there just can't be. Yeah. But you know, that's the thing that I get more. Like when I get emails, and I I, I just got done with a phone call an hour and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Guy from Texas, Ron. I want a dog that'll do it all and has an off switch. How many times? <laughs> what what is it? Is it, define do it all. <laughs> define do it all, and then define off switch. Because right. I said, I said, you know, I could find you a dog of every breed that has an off switch. Sure. Some are a little more predisposed to being able to like, okay, it's not time to hunt. But you can find that everywhere. But that became one of the questions and one of the selling points of dog. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a great off switch, mm-hmm. and that resonates to families like, oh. Well, where's the switch? Right. right. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's in how you raise the child, right? Yeah, it's just like <laughs> anything else. What expectations do you place on your dog of what calm is, what right? You know, how to behave in the house. Right. But yeah. Do you yeah. do you think it's gonna actually just go in the house as a puppy curl up and not try to chew on something? Because <laughs> all puppies are puppies. Uh, yeah, you're not saying the Brock Francais puppy will not eat no. eat your pillows, right? No. He'll eat your pillows. I've got a hole in my wall because. <laughs> Because yeah, they just decided I needed drywall today. Right. So it does happen, but um, the biggest difference, you know, um, is I don't spend a, time, a lot of time looking for my dogs. They don't tend to run away. They don't tend mm-hmm. to. They're connected. Um, to they're you. connected. They don't have. Uh, I, I have said this before, but it repeats. When I had my German short hairs, I'd ask them. You know, we'd be out hunting, and they'd have, like, this look on their face of, what do you want to do, boss? Versus when I hunt with my Brocks is, how do you want me to do this, boss? Which those are two different, very different responses from a dog. Like getting out of the truck. Yeah, yeah. Starting his first cast, and you haven't got your... Right, yeah, yeah good luck. shells in your... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My, and, I, and I know this is probably oversimplifying it, but, you know, when I'm loading up, my, my Brocks are... You know, kind of impatiently waiting for me. Sure. But they're waiting for me. Where? Right. Yeah. A lot of my short hairs didn't necessarily wait. And you know, you you you're familiar with my background with NAVDA, and mm-hmm. you you've done done mm-hmm. some of that. Yep. And I've always thought it was so odd that in our scorecard, cooperation has a lower multiplication factor. That's because it's a German. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't need cooperation. Yeah. We need obedience. Yeah. They're very efficient at what they want to get. <laughs> but when you have that cooperative dog, it to me it's like you see it. You see it when they're puppies. You see it when they're getting, getting older. Mm-hmm. They they're all gonna make us. They're all gonna piss us off at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. or chase something. They're, they're 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 bird dogs. Yeah. But there's just like. Whatever the percentage, a little less headaches, just a little yes. more connectivity yep. to us. Yep. Yeah. yeah, as a percentile, it's, right? Yeah. Uh, you're not, There's an you're not saying, like, here's the magic bullet to fix right. everything. Right. You know, my dogs aren't great for, for waterfowl. Um, you know, you don't want to get them real cold and wet. Right. They're not total wimps, but then they do fine with cold and they do right. fine with wet. They just don't do really well with cold and wet. Right. So Even though they fall into the versatile class, yep. Yep. if you're like, oh, I'm a... I'm a 50 duck, 50% duck hunter, 50% upland. You're not, you're not going to sell that no. person the dog. 25, 75? Okay. As long yeah. as you're acceptable, that, that 25 might not be great. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because that's what's strange when you have, and then you, like I have, fallen in love with a rare breed. 
it's the the customer conversations you have sometimes are like like you just wish you would record them and make your own podcast, right? <laughs> Thought about it. Has yeah. anybody ever sent you a picture of one of their puppies like getting a birthday cake? No. I have. Oh boy. Yeah. I I I've had people send me the first second. Boy, I should take that back. <laughs> now that you say it. Uh huh. Yeah. No, I've got it's happened. Uh, yes, it has. See? But Oh. I apologize to the client that's out there that's like, wait a minute, hey, that's me. Hey, Julie's my client in Texas. Yeah. And <laughs> I was gonna say her name. Her but second I didn't. one. Yeah. You know, she, it's, it's, yeah. I, but I know when I sell that dog to her, it's going to be house. taken care of yep. better than my mom and dad took care of me. Yeah. So when That's you, a low bar, but. It's a low bar, <laughs> but at least I lived. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, well, yeah, I was putting the dog. Anyway, so, and, and this is just because of breeder to breeder questions. How, when, when you get people on a waiting list in these days, I imagine, Everybody, what, what's some of your criteria? Because I get people ask me. You know. Sure. Yeah, I, the way I, I've done my deposit list, I just switched this up, is I don't start taking deposits um, until the litter goes home, and then I'm only taking deposits you for people. Litter's not. Yeah, so as long as I don't have puppies on the ground, then I'll start taking deposits for the next litter. Right. I won't hold a deposit anymore for, for a year or two, yeah, which yeah. I used to do that. I'm still trying to get a couple people off that, but it, right. it just got impossible to manage so if you want a dog next then i'll take your deposit but right. mine is a little a little straightforward we have a phone conversation mm -hmm. so if you're not willing to call me and talk you're not going to get a dog right. we're not just emailing back and forth yep yeah yep i'm horrible at emails and i can't judge who you are based on without texts talking. or talking yeah, i agree so it's a conversation um i you think i'm fairly good at weeding people out that aren't going to hunt with the dog um just based on simple questions so like i just had this guy call me twice from texas mm -hmm. um because the first time he didn't pass go so he he tried again yeah but i'm like dude i still have your caller id i remember who you were <laughs> yeah. it's been a month and a half but i still remember that first conversation so good try yeah um he's probably listening uh Could be, but hey but uh so yeah, are you going to be willing to hunt with the dog? Are you going to be willing to go through that trusting organization and do at least the NA, um, and and provide that household that's going to be good? I'm looking for an upper middle class family with kids. That's that hunts. That's my because you know it fits fit. you. Yep, and that's your that's who I am. That's who you are. That's that's where right. I want the dogs to go. You're, you're, Although I'm probably lower middle class, but well, it depends uh, on you know. <laughs> how you define that. Right. right? But, uh, yeah, that, that's what I'm looking for. Obviously, households with no kids isn't a problem either as long as they hunt. But, right. you know, um, that, that's, my, that's my target audience. Right. How many people, do you get to meet all the people to get your dogs, or have you mm -hmm. shipped some out? I've shipped two out ever, Yeah. and I won't do it again. And I just met one of the guys that I shipped to. So. Well, did it work out all right? It worked out great. Yeah, I, I've shipped probably... Out of, I don't know, seven, eight litters of Broncos, I, I think I probably shipped seven or eight dogs. Yeah. And I'm, I was never really too nervous about it. Mm -hmm. And the first, you know, I, like I got Bravo in from Hungary, so I'm like, mm -hmm. well, right. he made it. Yeah. He walked out of the kennel tail wagon, big deal, you know. But as, it, I swear, just as every year goes by, because I haven't bred in a few years, you just get more and more people like, no, I don't want to fly. I'll drive. I'll mm -hmm. drive to your place. Mm -hmm. Or is that what you're seeing? Mostly people come no matter where they are or they'll uh, fly in? No, or... I get a lot of people that will fly in and fly back, but you can bring the dog as carry-on. Under the seat. Right. And yeah. that, I'm telling you, it That's goes super best. smooth. Um, in fact, if you live in a great place to go hunting and you get a fall litter from me I, and you buy my plane ticket and <laughs> I'll fly out to you. I'm that kind of guy. Right. You don't you know? mind. I don't mind. Right. In fact, I, I did right. this that. This but if you live in the, in the center of a state that has no birds, you might have to come. Yeah. Pick. If you live in Ohio, I'm not coming to you. Right. Right. You can just... drive here anyway <laughs> and there's nothing attracting me to Ohio. Nothing. Other than nothing. maybe some sports teams. No. No. <laughs> But yeah, no, flying. It, I usually say, even if you're within 12 hours, it makes sense to makes sense to drive. If you're past 12 hours, it probably makes sense to fly. Yeah, that's just yeah. 
my general reference to, to people. I've but yeah, people. I don't ship anymore because United, who had a good service, I think. I don't think they do that anymore. Right, so. and I haven't even done a litter since. Mm -hmm. Have you had litter? You've had litter since COVID. Yep. So you're probably getting all drives now, right? Uh, still fly. Still fly after COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just. How do you get the dog to wear the mask? That's the thing, <laughs> you know, because in dog years, okay, eight sure. weeks is probably sure. over toddler. I don't know how. That I, works. I don't know how that works either. They didn't. They didn't require me to put a mask on the puppy as I flew, but. Um, but, you know, I definitely, like, in the peak of 2020, people mostly drove. Yeah, just, for sure. I had one guy rented a motorhome all the way from Colorado. Um, just for that purpose? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Mm hmm Got it back it, to Aspen. You know, that's that, a long that's, that's a long motorhome. Because he had his kids in the car, too, and the previous puppy from me, they all they all came out on a motorhome. Made a big trip. You know that dog's going to a good house. They, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, absolutely. call me anytime. Yep. Yeah. Rob's a good guy. Um, Good guy. How, how have they done NAVDA wise, the dogs, in, in the versatile testing? They fair, yeah. Um, the pups that are born in the fall tend to struggle with the water, just because, as you know, we have a hard water problem right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Um, meaning you can walk on it. And, yeah, right. Um, you know, track is. They don't typically fail track, but they usually don't get a. They're four. not a. They're not a Munsterlander. They're not a Munster. They're not. Get, they're not getting a four out of the box track. Not always. Is that I mean, a, some do, yes, oh but yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm nervous about it, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, and I've seen, I've seen where I've disagreed with the assessment. Yeah. Oh, so, I've disagreed with judges watching one of my pups. Yeah. And, yeah. and I literally had to walk up to him like, guys. I know we're all judges here. Test is over, and we're not talking about scores. How did you come up with? <laughs> I've, uh, you know, myself. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, I just wanted their explanation, mm -hmm. but yeah. It, but in general, they get a they get a fair. They shape. usually pass. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because they probably don't look at the, the the two letters. They probably think it's a short hair, right? Well, no, that, that's <laughs> you know my conspiratorial mind is because it doesn't say GSP on it. Right. And it says BF that. Mm -hmm. uh, that am I not? Am I getting as fair shake? Am I on thin ice? Starting yes. Out here? Am I starting in the hole? Yeah. But um, usually by the time we get to the track, they've usually proven themselves. But yeah. Field work, nose pointing is always pretty solid. Yeah. 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 All like I. Well, I wasn't gonna get into it, but yeah, last year we went out to Arizona um, to do a. I, convinced my wife we need to go to Arizona to do a NA test really? because timing wise it just worked oh, out. Oh just for the age. Yeah and it happened to be quail season in Arizona and the kids have you know Thanksgiving week off let's drive all the way out there but yeah she was making like um, parent was making like a hundred 125 yard cast out there and they they gave her a three because. Uh, in field search. Yeah because she did, wasn't taking it serious enough and I'm like I don't know what you want. And everybody else from that chapter was like, oh, all the Brock Francais we see from here can't run like your dog. Right, right. I'm like, yeah, they just hit me with a three. They're like, what are you talking about? You know, that that is I will say with, with NAVDA, there is, I, I think across the board, you probably get, you probably, on most days, you're getting the right score. Yeah, and it, absolutely. And it, you're usually... If you're failing at something, it's pretty easy to tell. Mm -hmm. The nuance comes in: is that a four? Or is that a yeah. three? And I, but that happens in utility. Sure. That happens in healing. Sure. Like I have sat on the line and watched a dog, and two other judges say, oh, "I'm at a two. I'm like two. We're supposed to be sneaking up to a duck blind. Do you think that dog screwed up to sneak to the duck blind? Well, he he, that leash went straight twice. I'm like, yeah, but he went through nine. So I get that. You know, there's. There's definitely subjectivity sure. to the test, but in general, it gives you a pretty good picture. And, that, and that's and exactly what I say. And is a, it's a prize one search. Yeah, I ended up getting a prize two on the day because they dinged me on something else. Something so, else. Yeah. <laughs> um, which, I'm like, she went in the water. I, I know she hesitated a little bit, but she went in the water. So you had a guy that was like, eh, in the field, like, oh, this has got to be. Yeah. yeah. I so I ended up with a prize two day. 
with, that's the, a good dog, with what I thought was a prize one dog that had a prize one day. So at the end of the day, a good compromise leaves everybody mad, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, but a solid dog. It was, she's fine. Yeah. Like it's I said, but, but I was expecting a prize three out of her that day. It just was so irritating. Then you saw a better dog. Yes. Then I was saw expecting. A little, yes. They saw something in the middle. Yes. But so yeah, that's confusing. We'll, we'll wash our hands. Yeah, yeah. We'll be good. I guess it. it's I fine. It. I had, you know, Zygon, my my claim to fame wire hair, that was a 67 no prize pup <laughs> and 100% deserved his score. Yeah. And he later on went to the imitation. Yeah. So. It is not the end all and be all. It's a right. good barometer. It's a good barometer. And as a breeder too, when you sell these dogs, they go around the country, and you see something, you're like, "Yep, yeah, okay. Well, at least at least it's consistent." I'm looking for patterns, right? Exactly. You know, am I always getting low track? Am I always getting no entry water? Am I always getting you know, right? Um, and so that's that's what it's helpful for. Yeah, is that it statistical is. base, right? Mm-hmm. How about teeth and health and all the other stuff? Are they pretty solid they're pretty healthy yeah um with it being a rare breed whenever you have something that comes up you're you're trying to figure out is that genetic or is just just random chance you Uh, know there's some autoimmune diseases out there that hit every breed yeah and, and you're trying to figure out okay is that genetics is that Circumstances, it's probably a combination of, of both, and you right. just don't get enough of it to figure out exactly what's right. going on. Right. There was a tragic thing out west where there was a genetic <laughs> disease that you know was potentially fatal. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately, the breeder there did all the right things, contacted everybody. My brother ended, ended up having one of those dogs that he had to spay and rehome, and and it's living a fine life, right? But, right. You, you, but you did you did the due diligence say we're not breeding that absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. Um, I've had a couple um, develop some some seizure issues um, a couple as in you know three total after yeah. the last ten years yeah um, but still it's concerning right I mean whenever you have such small numbers you have something pop up you just are are concerned about yeah. it oh but, yeah. Um, it's nerve wracking, it is. isn't it? it is. You're always trying to do the right thing, right? You're like, you're like, oh, no, I got this good dog and a good dog, and they, and you have this litter of dogs, and you're like, oh, I hope everything's okay. Mm-hmm. I just was on the phone with, I'll leave Jay's name off of it. <laughs> Sorry, Jay, but he just turned down a pup that the breeder told him, look, just when you get it home, what well, is it? Every breeder would say, bring it to your vet mm-hmm. if something's wrong. But he told the guy, he goes, well, there might be something wrong. Why don't you bring it and reconfirm it? What, can I ask what was potentially wrong? The vet thought she heard like a, a possible heart murmur. Okay. Yeah. Which, good. good. That's what one of the things they check on a puppy. Right. But he was almost, well, I will say that that puppy almost ended up going home. And Jay said, well, let's, why don't you err on the side of caution and I'll just wait for another. Sure. You know, yeah, yeah. Heart murmurs it, are one of those things in pups that I think one in ten have one, right? Yeah. Just, and so you don't catch it when you don't catch it, but yeah, and the, they usually grow out of the heart murmurs. So that's not something that overly concerns. But me, you also but just it, it gives you like you got to tell the customer, right? Absolutely. It's not like you're always selling these dogs to your family, right? Right. You, you can't right. say, "Hey, Uncle Bob, don't worry." You know. Yeah. This is a person you made this relationship with. It's it's stressful. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. It, I, Heart um, murmurs are more concerning than like an undescended testicle because those things yo-yo back and forth. Oh yeah, I've seen them come up. I've seen them disappear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> when minute. I say home, they had two, and then right. you're telling me you got none. Ah, they <laughs> right. went back up. You can suck them back down. How but, stringent um, are the the Brock Francais with teeth? The club. The club. Um, I don't think they do like on their. The club usually does like the UKC format for mm-hmm. their field trials because it combines the the confirmation with the field work. Yeah. Um, so teeth is something they they look at, um, but it's uh, it's not high on the list of things right. that like is disqualifying. Like extras but. and extra missing. Like that's never been a big concern of mine. Yeah. You know, now a bad bite, like a bad. Right. That's be, one of like okay. Bigger deal. Then when that dog goes, it's going to have a breeding restriction on mm-hmm. it. Be the best dog. And that's what happened with Zygon. I ran him at the Invitational, and 
this is a self-serving story, but Davy Cavins was a well-respected NAVDA judge from out west, and he was my one of my judges walked with me at the Invitational. And you watch Zygon. <laughs> now, now our puppies are going to start playing. Right, now they've been uh, here an hour. They yeah, now, yeah, they're like, hey, come on, let's play. And uh, he watched Zygon run for the hour, and he was impressed. Like, And this dog had just been hit by a van two and a half months, four, three months earlier, right? Mm-hmm. Just on the mend. Broken ribs, his whole, all of his left ribs were broken. This dog ran the Invitational, did such a great field search. Davey came and come to me and says, Ron, I know you, I've never met you before. I've never seen this dog before, but I need to get this dog, I need to get this dog bred to some dogs. I know I'm like, hang on a minute, Davey. Because at the invitation, we don't check Dude, teeth. The, yeah, they're just at the NA. I, I open his mouth up, like, uh, and he looks like Gomer Pyle. <laughs> David goes, son of a bitch. He yeah. says, why did you run him in the test? I said, I wasn't trying to breed him. I just wanted to see if I could pass right. the test. You know? Yeah, and he so, thought the test was just for breeding. Uh, yeah. Right, right. And it, yeah, he he had he had some skill, but boy. You couldn't remember. <laughs> Underbite? Yeah. Underbite. Undershot. Oh. Real. That's not I good. mean, yeah. you could have put a cigarette in there like that, and he'd, he'd have held it. <laughs> yeah, you can't breathe the underbite. No. Uh-uh. Can't breathe the underbite. But, yeah, no, I've had a couple heart murmurs um, in, in pups, and they've always outgrown them by, yeah. by the end of their So pretty their healthy shots. overall. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Just a couple of those little weird fluky things that you always try to narrow down, but are elusive mysteries. Yeah. So. Well, there's a lot of them. You know. Right. So, what have you been doing lately with the with the pups and the dogs? Where, where sure, because we haven't seen each other. You I said guess, two years. I'm thinking it's might be three. Might be three. Yeah, plus. Like, yeah. I would bet most listeners have not heard our last podcast when you brought beer over the last time. Yeah, we polished off a case in under an hour. <laughs> oh, that's an example. No, it's not. <laughs> well, everybody. Okay, it's possible. we're not going to do that this yeah, time. That was a line and Kugel. Sunset uh, wheat and Lineys, if you're listening, I, yeah. I miss it this winter. Yeah, Thank I don't you. know what happened to Sunset wheat, but I couldn't find it. Um, yeah, no, this uh, this year, um, I in the past I, I had a little less free time, but now I uh, I work for myself, so I was able to have a lot more time off this fall. So yeah. um, I also make a lot less money, but that's okay. Time is important. Time is important. And uh, so I made my first like big trip to South Dakota. I'd been there before for some dog events and one fall hunt that was literally a half a day long. Yeah. Because I was dropping, I was actually picking a dog up. Um, but so yeah. there's a breeder out that way then. Yeah, Brad Boysen lives in South Dakota, and um, that's who I got my first stud through. Cassius, mm-hmm. who was here last time, yeah. who uh, passed away last just before Christmas Day last year. Yeah. So. He was an awesome dog. Awesome dog. I miss him. But, uh, yeah, I went out to South Dakota this year with uh, my dad, my brother, um, and two buddies. And uh, the five of us had 16 Brocks. Whoa. Which was probably th- about 3% of the hunting Brock population <laughs> in America. Or Six, maybe more. I don't 16 know. dogs. 16 dogs, yeah. I mean, we didn't lack for dog power out no. on this trip. No, no. So. How many? What's the most you put on the ground? I mean, I, I I used to cut them all loose at the last half hour of a day just to let them run. But, yeah, no, I don't but, think we hunted more than than five at a time. Maybe <laughs> maybe six at a time once. Really? But yeah, you can. There's space out there. Oh, you yeah. can spread out. Yeah. Yeah, you're not hitting one cattail slough or something. You're, no, you're hitting. We some, try not to get in the yeah. cattail sloughs. Um, I had never got a sharp tail before, so that was uh, something I was able to check off my list, which was nice. Um, but when I got out there, <clears throat> now I've got this soulless gun that's just black synthetic that I, I know you're a big fan yeah, of. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. semi-automatic black synthetic, just yeah, right up your yeah, alley. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I love things that are made out of recycled uh, water bottles. But Ab- absolutely. The problem is, my son, I got that gun because my son had the 20 gauge youth model of that gun mm-hmm. and it shot really well and he shot really well with it. I'm like, I, I like this. So I got that same exact one. So when I got out to South Dakota and opened up the dog trailer box and pulled out the youth 20 gauge, oh no, not my gun, 
Fortunately, I had packed my backup gun, which is something you would like, is the uh, AYA side-by-side -side double triggers. That's probably a good three inches short on me with the stock, and I can't shoot it worth the save a darn. Yeah, but the youth model of the other gun... Was, yeah, I wasn't going to cut it. Wasn't it. Gonna I didn't cut pack it any 20 gauge ammo, and uh, it's not like you can just go to Walmart and stock up because... Uh, not today. Not find an year. ammo. I got good beer out there, Ron. All right, all right well, all right, let me have that one. <laughs> I, yeah, all your beer is a higher alcohol... Well, no, we, you know what? We'll start on the Hef in a minute. Okay. I'll, I'll right. kill this one. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, so I got out there and I... Uh, I shot like crap. Which, <laughs> good way to say it. Oh, that's about as polite as I can do. I still shot better than my buddy Paul, who bought his uh, his greenie out there, this nice style $8,000 over and under gun. He's still going to hit. No, could, the, no. So, dollar, dollar value does not increase your. No, my dad bought that side by side for $250. Uh, $250. Right. So, um, he got a good deal on that. But so, Paul, you can't hit anything. Um, we have a Paul like that too. Yeah, yeah we call him. Normally he's a good shot, but on we, this we trip. We call him, or I don't call him because I don't hunt with him that much, but his nickname is Paul Two Box to Wit. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Paul, sorry about that. So, he'll, he'll love this. Um, yeah, so my, my main goal in South Dakota was to get a hunt, right? I'd never got a hunt before, and I just, everything I'd read about him and watched on him, like, this is the bird I really want to get. So, of course, you know, being the shy me that I am, I chatted up everybody in the bar every every yep. night I could. Does anybody know where Huns are? Yes. So, finally, this uh, this local guy who was an interesting cat, and I'll tell you a story off there, <laughs> but I don't want to... He was interesting. He was a great dude. I, I really appreciate it. He got me a farmer's number and said, don't tell him I said to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is oh, not yeah. a ringing endorsement. Right. <laughs> um, and, of course, I call the farmer, and like most farmers, he's not there. So I left the voicemail, and sure as shit, he actually called me back, gave me permission on his thousands of acres, oh. just go have at it. And oh. uh, we got on Huns that day, and uh, my buddy Tom got one. My dad got one. Um we uh, we did another push, and I had two Huns get up right in front of me, right to left crossers. Missed them both. Pop that chamber open, and as I'm getting the shells back in, that third one, popcorn went even closer and even slower. Thank God. And I'm, and I'm standing there with an empty gun because I'm trying to get my shells in. Had I had my soulless synthetic that I yanked the plug out of, mm -hmm. I would have had my Hun. Maybe, so. maybe. No, not maybe. No, maybe. I, no not okay. maybe on this Here, one. One shot got him. Two shot maybe. <laughs> three shot. Yeah, I would still would have had three shots with that last bird that right. was moving a lot slower. Anyway, so you didn't get your hunt. I didn't get my hunt that trip. Uh, but what I did do on that trip was uh, I was working her by herself. Uh, Sage, sorry, the puppy I got with yeah, me. So that would have been three months ago. Yeah, so yeah, she was, she was little, real little. little so little I let trip. the other guys peel off and do like a big push and yep. i just worked her by herself right. for some sharpies over there and then i went back to the truck and th those guys we met back up and they were just going to keep keep going on a another big push so yep. i put my young puppy away and i got out my my 11 year old eve um who uh she's she's a great dog and went out and you know we got a couple sharp sharp tails but when we got back to the truck Eve has this habit of lying to me. She's just absolutely a liar. Where we get back to the truck and she'll go on point over here. And she like she does this all the time. She doesn't want to go back to the truck. No. No, doesn't want to be done on. So it. she'll actually go on a false point? Absolutely. <laughs> but so we all get back to the truck well, and we just all these guys up the know Brock this. stock. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> she, you know, she just wants to go hunt more. She's just like, oh, I go back. And uh, so all the guys, they're tired because they went on a big loop. So Eve goes on the point up here. I'm like, liar. Always trust your dog, right? So I say that to myself three times, and I start chasing after her. And we literally, we had just pushed through these buffalo berries, like yeah. these little side hills, like maybe 15 minutes before that. Right. And, um, and she's starting to go on 
on point and moving up and on point and then you know all the guys are standing back in the truck just all watching me move up the cell alone and with my old dog point creep point just creep. and then locks up and i move up in front of her and these sharp tails get up in front i hit one that goes over the hill and we move up again and she goes on point again and another flock gets up and i clean one get get down there and she just put on quite the clinic and how those birds were in there they had to have filtered in like right behind us is the only oh yeah yeah you just never you never can tell never know and uh so to to have my old girl put on just a clinic in front of all the guys that was pretty special oh yeah you know at least you walk better going like yeah yeah i knew it i knew it the whole time but you see me and eve yeah see that's what we do we live vicariously through our dog's (laughs) good performances yeah yeah so that was that was a lot of fun. And just to go out there and see that many Brock's work um, gave me a good gauge of where um, you know things were at, which was which is a lot of fun. Whenever you can watch that many dogs work yeah. of one breed, especially, like I said, it was probably 3% of the total population in America <laughs> of hunting on, Brock's. on one trip. And, you know, and that goes like what we were saying earlier. The, the rare breeds, you always want to get them into a hunting home, but... I had the same thing with Broncos. It's like the guys I know that are going to hunt 60 days a year, mm-hmm. they've they got an English setter, a pointer, yeah. or a yeah. German wa- short hair, yeah. German wire hair. Yeah. It's almost like, yeah, I wouldn't, they, they're ma- they might be willing to try one, but they're like, ah, I don't know. So we, we do end up getting him into like the, the starter home sometimes. Yes. You know? Yep. And every once in a while, you get one in a home that's like, oh, thank you. Yeah. You're yeah. you're 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 putting this dog in front of birds a lot and No, a lot of my customers, this is their first bird dog. Yeah. Because they're intimidated by the bigger, stronger, faster breeds. They Absolutely. Are. And then they read breed descriptions like, yeah, you know what, I need something that it matches me a little bit more. Yeah. 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 And I try to set proper expectations with everybody, you know, these aren't the magic bullet, but yeah, it um yeah, they're not everybody's dog, but no dog is. Right, right. I mean, if you're a field trialer, you only want high power stock. I mean, there's no way if you're a field trialer, you're like, you know, I'll try a dog that's methodical. No, no, I need something <laughs> that I'll figure out how to train it. I need something that runs like a damn, you know, you know, something delivering the mail. Right. And right. so it, it's hard to get them into those those homes. Yeah, you know, I think my dogs can be as fast as any of those higher power dogs, but they're not going to be as fast for as long for as many days. Right. This right. Is, just, an English pointer is just genetically different. You know, I mean, there's a reason they, they why. They burn calories the same way. <laughs> no, I mean, all the Iditarod guys breed in with English pointers for a reason. For stamina. Yeah. It, yeah. They just carry oxygen. I think different. George Hickok said something about when I interviewed him. And I might be assing this up, but I'm known for assing things up. The way they, they, not handle, but the way they use their glucose, yeah, they actually have a, almost a different metabolism. They're almost like a marathon runner when they're born. Yeah, like they were born to run, like a yep. Kenyan. You, you could take, you could probably take some average Kenyan, and he could outrun everybody I grew up with in Chicago, just Me. genetically. <laughs> I, I'd bet more on the English pointer. I knew this <laughs> really fat, slow Kenyan in the army that he couldn't run to okay. save his life. My but. bad. I'm the <laughs> My bad. Hold on. We got. I got to get a half here. Hold tight. Well, before we were so rudely interrupted by my bladder, um, and my wife's dog is barking in the background. Um, so, all right. So, South Dakota with the whole family, all them, all them Brocks. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was a. It was a good trip. Um, what was next? Well, we went to Arizona next, but uh, Nav- uh, Nevada is what I want to talk about next because that oh, was—I yeah. I just got back from there. That was. You went chasing chuckers. I did. I did. <sighs> How old are you? I am forty-one. Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah, because I ain't going. Okay. <laughs> Besides the fact that I got a knee that needs replacing. Yeah. I've never wanted to work that hard for a bird. Yeah. What was it like? Is awesome. Real? Oh. It is. <laughs> Don't tell me that. So uh, the re- one of the reasons why I went is you know I've got a puppy out there, Sam, and uh, you know he'd send me pictures all the time and like right. invite me every year. And I'm like, yeah, I can't make it. I so can't how old make is this it. dog that you? 
couple years. Three she years? is eight now. Okay, actually. so this so this was out. my my second litter. He's, He's been chasing problem. chuckers with her. The whole, yeah, the whole time his GSP just passed away, and so he got a new puppy and said, hey, you know, since you got to fly out here anyway, I might as well fly to you and bring the puppy along. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I only had like two days to actually hunt. Yeah. Um, and I thought, ah, should I book a third day? And I called him, and he's like, no, just, because I, I was supposed to book three days, and I, yeah. You know, when you're on those price line things, I right. just hit the wrong button because it was a <laughs> cheap sale. Right. So, um, thought I'd save him some money and ended up shorting myself a day. But, um, and I was in shape, right? I mean, I'd hunted South Dakota, I'd hunted Arizona, I'd hunted here quite like you, a bit. You had your hunting legs on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but, he, uh, he suggested how you get ready for trucker hunting is you get a 45 pound weight vest. Not doing it. Find a six story tall building. Not doing it. Go ahead. And then you sprint up all six flight of stairs okay. and then walk down. And when you can do that in like 25 minutes or less, then you're ready to go trucker hunting. Not doing that either. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> but like, you went. I did went. I did go. Because um, I, I wanted to hunt over one of my dogs, right? You know, I, I did get to hunt over a couple of my dogs out in South Dakota. And I promptly missed everything they pointed because right. I brought the wrong gun. Um, but uh, allegedly, <laughs> I definitely brought the wrong gun. It looked prettier. It just didn't kill birds for me. Um, so I went out there, and uh, it's it's very different than Arizona. Like Arizona is rugged, but um, this is just vast and feels almost empty. Like the sagebrush is like the only thing that's out there, and bunch grass and, and when it's grass. not there it's just rock right yeah if it's not yeah. sage grouse or, che- or sage sage brush or cheat grass mm-hmm. it's just rock yeah but in between the rock it's a lot softer than i was anticipating like arizona the ground's hard everywhere but yeah. in between the rocks in, in nevada it's actually really kind of soft in spots because it's all this volcanic ash you know that has settled so in between the the extremely sharp rocks <laughs> is softer ground than i was anticipating yeah. but um it, it was really nice hunting over one of my pups and getting to see her work i could do that um, that's cool yeah yeah and i've always thought that the the pyrenees the brock france pyrenees are really built well for chugger hunting now they're not a 400 yard dog most of the time right um, but they're a a medium build. Medium build. The Pyrenees are an arid, dry, steep mountain, so right. it's Made somewhat sense. equate, right? Right. Um, and the and their their style isn't like uh, as staunch as some of those other breeds. So we'd get up on top of these ridges and try to work on top of the ridge line, so you're above the bird, right? Because right. if you if they see you coming, you're never going to catch up to them. It's that being possible. So what really surprised me about trucker hunting is how much tactics came into play. Uh, how as like, much as the dog and being able to shoot and having the right boots, the tactics. Oh yeah, like not just like I mean he Jeff talked about okay we got to go this direction in the morning because then we're going to come back on that direction and they're going to be this point in the mountain and like when we found birds like punching in what elevation that are at bandwidth wise okay they're going to be within 200 feet of this for the rest of the day wow. like you know this mountain doesn't change like our our cover here in michigan it changes by the season right how much rain did we get <laughs> right by? right so you think okay it's a bunch of rock it's not going to change that much but how much snow load is on there um what the temperature is at what wind direction is at yeah. moves those birds around all the time so he's always writing that stuff down and you got to be a, a tactician to, yeah, you know, I was in the army, and it was very similar to like how you approach some of those type of you things. You always had to have a meeting in the morning. Yeah. All yeah. right, here we got a we got a northeast wind, uh-huh. which means uh-huh. we're gonna have an updraft, and we're like, you're like, what? Yeah. Because yeah. you're right. You can go grouse hunting in Michigan. You might have a a humidity factor, but the birds are going to be in that let's just say section. Yeah. Yeah. You might not find them, but. They'll, the chucker could be totally, totally changed different. by everything. Completely. Yeah, I'd by thousands of feet. <laughs> um, 
So, but really what shocked me is like, the fact that you even went shocked <laughs> me. <laughs> it was a lot harder on my feet. Like my boots were broken, yeah. but by the end of the first day, I could barely walk. Really? It just tore my feet up. Now I didn't have like surface blisters. They were like down. And I, but I just... wore too thin of a sock and it just, just all the undulation, the, the, how much change in rock and how much side hilling right. you're doing. You're just always side hilling. Just wore your like wore your feet muscles out. Yes, right. yes. Yeah. You should get Kenetrek to sponsor this. Okay. And, uh, get a good boot because I did not have Kenetrex or Krispies. I had a I had a you know just a cheap two hundred dollar boot. Right. Uh, which is fine <laughs> which in is, most other parts oh, of yeah. the world. Yeah. Even Arizona, my my cheap two hundred dollar boots were more than right. plenty, but not in Nevada. I don't think I've did, ever spent more than two hundred dollars right, boots. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? Yeah. But out there, if you're not you dropping five hundred dollars yes, crispies, do. right? Yes, or... you do. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, if that's all you did, that'd be money very well invested. So, but it was fun. Like, um, I, I of course missed the first bird because they somehow you're in the wide open, but they go over these little ridges where you have these like short little windows to shoot at them, right? So it popped out from around a rock, went down over a rock yeah. in, in a half a second, and I knew the dog was close, so I was aiming higher, higher than I should yeah. have. But yeah. uh, anyway, so we're side hilling across, and uh, <laughs> Sam hit, Sam goes on point, kind of she like kind of crosses back over where something we just went. And she went on point on top of this ridge, so we have to go kind of side hilling across this again, and. You're crossing this little strip of snow that goes for a good, you know, 300 feet, right. kind of straight down. You know, it's probably going to be a good 150 feet before you hit something really solid. <laughs> so you're you're crossing the snow, hoping you don't hit ice because oh. you're. It's pretty steep. It's yeah. So that's what we're trying to avoid, right. which Jeff just did in a very controlled fa- mash- fashion. If his wife is listening, um, don't worry, Tammy. He was good. Um, so we get across there, and she goes on point. And uh, what what I said about their style of not being super staunch, and I think that works well for Chucker, is you know, she went on point up on this ridge, and those birds are probably 125 yards down the hill. She's picking from, up the updraft. Of, yeah, and when they're in a cubby like that, she can does, get a lot of smell, yeah, right? Yeah. So as soon as we caught up to her, then she'd move down with us, and I'd get ahead of her, and she'd move down and move down. So, I mean, by the time we catch back up to them, and I know they're moving a little bit, it's 200 yards away from where she went on point originally. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> so these birds got up. I I tickled one. Jeff anchored it for me, even though he claims it was 100% my bird. Hey, uh, he's a good host. He's a good, he's a great host. <laughs> and then I... I need that. Yes, right? <laughs> and then uh, I, I hit another one, and I swear to God, we were shooting number fives, which... You know, normally he shoots three inch sixes, but just couldn't find them. Right. So right. we were shooting two and, a, two and three quarter fives. And that bird took that number five load, just kind of wing like that, and kept sailing down over just the mountain like nothing. It's, hit him, probably hit him in the belly or hit him in the. They're just tough birds. All the birds, the farther west you go, I swear the birds get harder and, and tougher. They just do. Yeah. They just do, Ron. <laughs> I would agree with what I'd agree with is. I think of a bird when I think of shot size. Mm-hmm. I think of the bird size. Yep. Right. Yep. And I, you know, how many times have you heard somebody go like, "Oh, late season pheasants, five shot, four shot." Right. I want the most amount of BBs I can get that can kill a bird. Yeah. When somebody, at least I don't think anybody's ever said it about chuckers, but I've literally heard people say, "Well, late season pheasants, they're they're feathered up." Come on. I mean, if you think the density of the feathers yeah. is why the bird didn't get killed. No, it's because you didn't hit them well. It's probably, yeah. exactly. But the, the, I think that the wrong late shell. season dense the bird shell. that took that number five. But you wow. saw a bird, well, you've seen birds get like, boom, right? It's like, yeah. like I hit it, yeah. and it keeps flying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, a, a three inch number six is probably the perfect chuckle. I, I would load. think. I would think. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I, I just scratched one out of there, and I was kind of mad because I, I could have had my double, and I didn't. Yeah. But then uh, later in the day, Sam went on a 
on a point, and I got a got a nice true double on that. So that was that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. Yeah, that always makes you feel like it does worth the trip. Yeah, especially as a borrowed gun. But his gun was a lot like it, it just the older model of my gun, mm-hmm. so it fit me really well. I was really familiar with it. He was borrowing his buddy's gun, and he had a couple issues getting the safety off just because he wasn't mm. familiar with it as much as your own gun, right? Auto loader, probably. Auto loader, yeah. yeah. His safety was in front versus yeah, oh, in the back. Yeah, and, uh, blah, blah, blah. yeah no. It, <laughs> I watched him have to, like, it was a left or, yeah, left or right crosser, and he, like, halfway, you, like, see him take the gun and, like, look down oh. to find the safety, and, like, <laughs> you're not getting that bird at that point, right? So... Um, then we moved down the hill, went into the lower country, and then get, and got on the valley quail, or some people call them California quail, but it's, it's a valley yeah, quail. Yeah, I've never seen them. Yeah, they look a lot like a gambles. Yeah. Um, just yeah. gambles had that double top knot, and yeah. the valleys don't, and, and some of their coloration is slightly different. Um, even though they look very similar, they, they act totally different. Those valley what, quail. In, in what respect? Because the, the valley quail like thicker cover. Um, they'll just, they'll hold tighter they they tended not to run out from underneath us okay. quite as much um so i i got a, i got a nice pair of them a male and female um so that was that was cool because that was my first valley quail as well yeah. as my first chucker on that trip um but yeah i bounced one of those i hit one solid with with the number fives because i didn't switch out because mm-hmm. like i said we were out of sixes i hit it solid i see the thing go down the hill Bounced twice, <laughs> had it marked. Went on, picked my other two up, because um, I I got a double on those two. I right. shot really well out there. Right. It like, sounds like yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Sounds like it. Um, and we went, picked that third one up. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. It got up and flew away, and then he missed it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, I've seen that. There's, I've seen it. In, I've seen it in dog tests, let alone <laughs> with pen raised birds. Yeah, really. Where you you like uh, it's down. Yeah, you you saw it, and I think sometimes like somehow we stun them, stun them, we, we nick them. That's what I thought too. You know, I had and, to be stunned, and they just get down like the bird. If the bird's on the ground, it's like, damn it, damn it, that hurts. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. He's got his wing up on his head, rubbing the back of his head. <laughs> that's really stung. And then people show up. It's like I got to get out of here. Yeah, and you're never ready for that. No, no, no. And, and it was in it was in pretty thick cover then. Um, so, but. We the next day we could get possibly into Huns, and uh, I was really excited. It's all that. in Nevada. All in Nevada. You can get three species in the same That's, day. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 I would have thought you had to get a little back to the east to get some Huns. No, there's some Huns right out in the sagebrush. There's enough. Really? I didn't get one. Well, but, but they're there. They're there. Yeah. You so, saw. Them. No, I, we never got into them on on that trip. It was. Um, but it's possible. Yeah, it, it's possible. Um, but I did lose one of my chuckers out there because I bought my bird vest from a fishing company. You know, that the fishing company that bought a hunting company that tries yeah, to sell yeah, products. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they're real good fly rods. <laughs> Is that the one? No, they uh, the, they more like, like bass. Oh, mm. um, Shakespeare? <laughs> The Bass Pro that okay. bought Cabela's. Bass Pro. Oh. Yeah. And I had one you of those really truckers. Made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So I gotta I gotta go get one of those uh, those nice pike fests. Something like something. That's not gonna drop a bird out in the middle right. of Nevada after because you, you work really hard for these chuckers. I lost back in the day, I lost a rough grouse out of a pouch. I had I don't know I can't remember why I had this vest on. But I kind of stuck it in there. Mm-hmm. And it was just literally no well to it, right? Yeah. And we get back to the truck. And in fact, it was Danny Riello was hunting with me. And dog brought it back to me because that's, you know, your dogs right. always bring it. Right. No matter who shoots it, your dogs bring it back to you. Yeah. And I grab it. I put it in there. And we get back to the truck. I'm like, I feel a little light. <laughs> we were lucky enough to find that oh, bird. Because we kind of retraced our steps and yeah. the dog just found it yeah but yeah wrong vest is not good no it's not good <laughs> and when we got back to the truck and i'm pulling out and i, I remember sitting down because we had a you know a half a cliff bar each because that's what we had for lunch because you're four miles in you're yeah, not another, packing. another no-go for me but go ahead <laughs> keep going and yeah. i'm like oh i probably know what hillside it came out 
we're not going back. Like it's that's you're not doing it. You're that's, done. That's you don't have enough daylight. So yeah, you can't. You can't do it. So oh, that was uh, that hurts. Yes, it does. Yes, that it hurts. does. But yeah, I thought my Arizona trip was gonna you know get me ready for Nat Nevada, but it it did not. It did not. Even though Arizona is really tough and rugged too. It's, it's not, not the, hunt. it's not the steep, it's not the side hilling, it's not right. the seven thousand feet rolling altitude. And it it can be steep, but not for as sustained. Right. The, I mean, that has that, but that's not where those type of birds are. Right. right. I mean, it's got sheep country in Arizona too, but you're not finding quail on the side of a mm-hmm. cliff mm-hmm. like you are the chuckers, those yeah, mother I, chuckers. You know, and everybody says that same same thing, right? You hunt the first time. Second time for revenge. Yeah, first time for fun, second time for yeah. revenge. But I can tell you, man, I, I've got no revenge, but I want to do it again. Like, do you really? Well, I love my wood. Though. I you're love young. my woodcock because they play nice. Yes. And I can, I like, you know, when the woods is empty of woodcock, it feels alone. Like my friends left. <laughs> you know, like I'm gonna leave this party because everyone just left. Mm-hmm. And I love them, but I think, I think chucker might be my new favorite bird. Really? Oh man. The way they get up and oh, it's just see, and that's what I've never seen, and that's what you know. I get invites constantly. Yeah, all Ron. In fact, my one friend Dave, who's on my Zoom meetings all the time, Ron, I can get you into some chucker without killing yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I've yet to see wild chucker. So Mm -hmm. there's a part of me that's like, okay, once this knee gets replaced, or maybe they come up with a gel shot that works. I'm like, okay, yeah, because that's the one thing I've heard. It's a different flush. It's, it's just, it's just so. It's like nothing you've done, right? right? It's like yeah, exactly. It's quail, like nothing. Quail and pheasant, different, it's, right? It's Big birds, but you're yeah. in the same territory, yeah. same. Yeah. yeah. You know, pick the bird out, shoot, but you're on a side hill half the time. Yeah. My buddy Butch, um, you know, he's he's got a spot where he said that his chucker hunt was the easiest hunt he's ever been on. Where that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah, I won't say exactly because I'm somebody will probably figure it out. But anyway, they ended up walking downhill the whole time, and the wife was at the bottom of the hill with lunch and picked them up and drove around in again, and they got oh. chucker, pheasant, huns, and valley quail on that trip. So okay, I'm in. Right, he, I'm in. I, I can't drop you a pin because he didn't give me it right. either. But uh, well, that sounds. Exciting. But if you can find something like that, oh, and I'm but absolutely. I would, like wild, I would like to see wild chucker. Yeah, I really would. And I really want to get a wild hun if somebody out there is listening and wants to invite me well, along next year. So. I know you can go to North Dakota and do it. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know my, my buddy Tyler, you probably listen to his podcast. Uh-huh. And we almost hooked up with him out in uh, in Arizona. Um, cause oh, he yeah. Had, he, he goes down there for his camp. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, hey, we're here. You know, I heard you got a couple days uh, where you're not hunting with anybody if you want to get together. Um, but uh, I had some car issues. And when we tried to get a hold of him on the, uh, on the cell phone, he... Oh, it, that's why you asked me yeah. for his email address. Yeah, I wasn't going to ask you for his number. but right. So I sent him an email. Like, here are the dates where I'm down there. And um, and I listen to his podcast, too. Yeah. Um, and so he had dates that lined up with my dates. But where he was was, like, so far away that um, we're Did trying to find... Yeah, we're trying to find a spot in between. And we tried to call each other on the cell phone a couple times. Yeah. It, it just... Where we were, you just and trying to find a spot to hunt together without burning all his spots because he had the flush guys coming yeah. down like the next yeah. day. I'm like, I don't want to burn those spots. Let's find some place in the middle. Mm-hmm. And trying to find a spot in the middle with uh, overtax is just impractical. Well, how did Arizona go though in general? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, what I'll say next is if you want to avoid the type of adventures that I had, I would call my buddy. Spencer, he's a guide out there, um, and his he's got a YouTube page starting to go now too. It's azquailadventures.com, not Arizona Quail Adventures. It's shorter than that. It's azquailadventures.com. He's a guide. If you want to do Arizona, I've never done a guide, but I'm. I can tell you, if you're going to go there for three or four days and want to get on birds, there's just so much space. Oh, yeah. 
trying to narrow it down. Like, if you got 10 days, you probably don't need to pay for a guide. Right. But if you got, if you got four, four yeah. you, you want to pay for a guide because you want to have a good time. And just um, while the hills aren't as rugged as Nevada, the roads are much worse. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, you're going you're gonna to struggle. Yeah. You're going to struggle uh, getting into areas safely and yeah. getting out safely. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, now, fortunately, I've got a really... Uh, last year we went, as I mentioned before, um, and we we got on gambles. Um, my daughter got her first bird out there, out there, um, and, and my son shot the first gambles he ever saw, um, which was which was pretty cool. He shot really well out there on that trip. Um, How old your boy? He's 15 now. He can yeah. swing pretty good. He. So is he better than Dad? He's better than Dad. Uh, he you can, know what's the video games? I'm telling you, it's the video it's games. something. He can out walk me now too, and, oh. and now he can out shoot me. And so you know what a double is, right? Two birds get up, yeah. right? in, in two shots. Two birds. You scotch double. Two birds with one shot. That's an accident. Okay, but what do you call it when you get a double scotch double? I'd like to say luck. <laughs> it's impressive no matter how. But, but yeah. If, yeah, you pull that off, you're like, well, you can't take it away you from can't him. Can't take it away, yeah. No. So there was a lot of doves out there this year, and yeah, he shot four doves in, in two shots. So <laughs> he's got a little, little Steven Savage 5.55 five, five, five that you he, know, that he is shoots a, really well. That's a solid gun. It's it, cheap and it's solid. I got one of those when I did that Meat Eater episode in... I think it was on the Sage Grouse okay. episode. And I told him, I said, well, if, if I'm going to shoot the gun, you got to send me one ahead of time. Right. And they gave it to me. And, you know, I'm a lefty, but I'm used to shooting everything that's sure. neutral. doesn't matter. I've adapted to what I adapted to. And I'm telling you, it was a, it was a solid gun. Yeah. Yeah, I and uh, the safety gets sticky when it's really cold out, which matters here. Well, yeah, but yeah. that's I mean, that's what for it, for a gun that's yeah. you know five. Is it five hundred bucks? It's, yeah, it's, it's it's right it, there. It's under six hundred. It's I under six hundred yeah. bucks. You can't really complain. I mean, you're going to get a, a lot of value out of that one. Um, All right, that was uh, that was break number two. Um, I have a fresh hef, and I actually have another hef in in queue. Oh, I got to keep up, don't I? Well, no, don't, no, you don't, please, do not, don't make the mistake every young man does. Oh, do not try. Challenge accepted, do, Rod. Do not try. <laughs> this is a recipe, I'm going to tell you a story. You're a pro. I'm going to tell everybody a story. Ben Jones from RGS came down to dove hunt with me. Yeah. Three, well, it would be three seasons ago, I guess, two and a half seasons ago. And I invited him down, and I said, oh, I'd love to come dove hunt. And he brought a 30-pack of hams, mm -hmm. which you don't see everywhere. No. Nope. He loves hams and hams light. I like Miller light. You know, we're not hitting heavy-duty beer. And we're sitting at the kitchen table. I got him to play the guitar, and it's getting toward midnight. And again, dove hunting doesn't start till, you know, noon. And at right. this place we're going, it's not till 1. On opening day? On opening day, okay. dove. And in Virginia, right? And uh, so, and he's he's listening to my podcast. I'm telling you what, the, it, the CEO of a Habitat organization could not be any more one of us <laughs> right. than Ben Jones. And it was about midnight. I said, "Well, I said, what do you think, Ben?" I said, "Do you want to hit it?" And he goes, "Like, oh, oh, I thought you were the the big beer drinker." I'm like, "Oh no, all right." He threw down the gun. He, he, he threw down the challenge. And about an hour and a half later, he's tapping out. He's like, I, he says, I got to go to bed. I said, oh, oh, I, oh, I thought you wanted to stay up. <laughs> but anyway. I love beer, just beer doesn't always love me. So I'm not going to try to keep keep pace with you. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, I'm telling you, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. 
So Arizona was, yeah. was great. Yeah, it's such a short drive. I thought I'd do it again. Sure, sure. Um, it's only 32 hours from my door to where we're going this year. Yeah, just three days. Yeah, so... I, uh, I loaded up my very best four-wheel drive vehicle, which happens to be a 2001 Chevy Astro van. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's a killer. She's a killer. It's all-wheel drive. But they should have made that in a bigger version. I, I would have loved... No, I like the short because... Well, it's... It it's, gets me everything I need. Right. Anyway, so I'm actually... I make the joke a lot about it because it kind of looks like those vans that says free candy on the side. Mm-hmm. But... Mm-hmm. Um, the kids loved it because they each had their own bench seat. Yep. Uh, pulled my brother's dog trailer out there, so I brought five of my dogs and uh, made it down to, to the southern border. Last year, we went out and got the gambles. This year, we wanted to try for Scalies and Merns. Mm-hmm. Now, I was born in Michigan, but I was, I was raised in Arizona. Um, but we only ever hunted gambles. We never hunted Scalies. We never hunted the Merns. Yeah. Even though we deer hunted in Merns, Merns country, we just... You were, yeah, you weren't hunting. We didn't hunt them. Um, so I wanted to go down there. And, now, I had gotten one Merns before. Might have been with my 45. Might have been. But... But you weren't targeting them. No. Right. So I uh, wanted to go down there and, and uh, get that checked off the list. And I, you know, my buddy Spencer... Um, was gracious enough to, uh, he wasn't in town, so we couldn't hunt together, but he sent me some spots yeah. and said how to hunt them. Now, he's not going to do that for anybody else. Mm-hmm. Nobody email him and ask for pins and right. and uh, diagrams of how to attack things. But he, because otherwise, I mean, like I said, the space is just so big. You would yeah. spend a lot of time. It's like them. coming from Michigan and going to South Dakota for the first time. You're like, I've never seen this much acreage in front of me. Yeah. But you're looking at like... But looking at both things, attacking South Dakota with no guide is a lot more doable. Because, okay, you are gonna you see this field, you see this drainage, those pheasants are going to be head down in that day. drainage. Yeah. yeah. Where you just see... It, finding the subtleties in cover in, in the desert is, is a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Trying, to, trying to narrow that down. Um... But yeah, I could see where other people, a lot of people, would be overwhelmed in South Dakota as well. But Arizona is just a little bit, a little bit tougher if, if you don't level. have the time. It's yeah. a different level. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So went down there, um, got to hunt scales, um, scale of quail with my my buddy Butch Nelson, um, which he's a longtime dog trainer. You know, um, trained a lot of field trial dogs. Probably nobody listening to your podcast knows him because he's that older generation, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but a solid, good dude. So it was good to good to hunt with him. I got my first scaled quail. My son got his, and my daughter got hers. Um, now, I say that because technically, the three of us shot one bird three times. So I'm going to count. That counts for everybody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all pulled the trigger. <laughs> they all pulled the trigger. Some as around. that dead bird was falling, my daughter shot it again, and I <laughs> saw it poof again. We didn't get to eat that one, but uh, that shit happens. Yeah, but honestly, uh, Sage over there had the best point of the day on uh, on the scaled quail. She probably held it for a minute and a half before he got over there, which is uh, which is pretty cool You're to excited. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Butch had his dogs too. He's got French Britneys. Um, and they're good dogs, but to have one of my dogs kind of outwork his and get there first. Even if and, it was that one thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, but I'm going to say my dogs are 100% better. Right. right? And then that's how it It's works. like a soccer game. My kid, hey, my kid kicked a goal. Exactly. It, it doesn't uh, matter what the rest of the I, team did. I don't care if your kid's got more. Today, my kid, my kid kicked, kicked the, goal. the goal. Exactly, exactly. And Butch will never listen to this, so no, I can say whatever I want. Yeah. Um, what, this would be the one podcast he listens to. <laughs> Love you, Richard. Um, but yeah, so that was that was a lot of fun. Um, didn't get to hook up with Tyler because, like I said, the communication issues, and I blew out a tire um, deep in the backcountry, and I had tried to buy a full size spare, um, but they're 15 inch wheels. And uh, nobody makes a 15 inch wheel anymore. So you like, and I didn't have time to go dig through it. Yeah. So that the guy I bought it from, all he used this fan for was to launch his boat. So that spare tire was so rusty 
I was so worried about blowing my lug all the way through. Right. Because it just is like, oh my gosh. You're gonna be it was, me. It was super scary, Ron. I, I, and you I, didn't get home though with this. Oh yeah, we were deep down in. Yeah. Um but that that was the day that my uh my son got a Merns. Um with Eve, actually. She uh Your she older worked dog. Yeah, my older dog. Um she worked really hard that day. Blew so you up, talked blew your whole ass. family into going down well, here. Even this. the wife. Even the even wife the came. Wife. Yeah, and the wife last year too. We camped last year and she camped out and then they got down in the thirties at night. Ooh. And then we were going later this year and she said, I'm not camping again. So mm-hmm. we got um an Airbnb um and uh stayed there and the the ranch manager you know the first day we checked in you know i didn't kind of let him know i was bringing five dogs because <laughs> i was like all they're gonna do is say no right. but once i'm there what are they gonna do kick me out you're already here right so um and that definitely was the right strategy and his son was a professional guide who didn't come up and say hi or even see the dog so you don't get a shout out tyler but um <laughs> But, no, so we had a good time out there, got in that emergency country. Eve did really well. Um, uh, a buddy of mine, Brandon, gave me that spot and uh, put us right on the quail. You're, you're happy you did it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it was, it's a long drive. I don't know if I'm going to go again next it, year. That's, but. that's the part that gets, like, I'll get on the Zoom room Thursday, and Dave Hughes and Monty and I think one other guy they're down there all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, Ron, come down here. I'm like, I'm okay with hunting with someone else's dogs. You know, I mean, I you always want, no, but I mean, you always want to hunt with your dogs. Yeah. But then to go somewhere I've never hunted, a species that I've never hunted, yeah. then I do want. Like, if they had pheasants down there, I'd go down there and go hunt pheasants with them and their dogs. Right. right. So I'd want to do the drive too. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, it's. If you had a driving partner, it's two hard days. Yeah. If you by yourself, it, to to Merns Country is probably two and a half. Yeah. Hard days. Yeah. With a partner. But if you doing, if you, you know, stopped in Kansas, unless you're doing Yellow Jackets. Yeah. Or, or whatever I called them when I was in the seventies. <laughs> but if you stop in Kansas and hunt a couple days, break yeah, it up. Yeah. That's what Justin does. Get a breather. Get a breather. Yeah. yeah. But Kansas charges though. They don't have a like a couple day hunt. They charge you the full boat. Right, because the upside of Kansas is that license is good to the next year as long as it's before the day you bought it. Okay. And I did that once. Okay. I actually got two Kansas hunts, different calendar years, on one license. On one license. But they do you, you got to time it. You got to time it well. I want to talk yeah. a little bit. You sent me a picture of your daughter with her first woodcock. Yes. Yep. I, and it was whose gun? My my grandmother's gun. Your so, grandmother's, not your grandfather's. Not my grandfather. No, absolutely. Grandmother. My grandma was. Oh, Sounds cool. She was a bad bitch. <laughs> I, <laughs> she would hate me saying that. Right. Absolutely, she was probably smack me. But <laughs> she she graduated eighth grade. She was the vice president of a, a pretty successful company. She could drive an eighteen wheeler. Um, she water skied to like 78 despite never learning how to swim and and she would absolutely go bird hunting deer hunting and and be able to keep up with the boys oh. so um, she's somebody I want my daughter to emulate absolutely right. and she's the, not one of those people that asks for equal rights she just took it she said yeah, she's like yeah. she probably like what do you mean women are put down like no do what I want to yeah. do do what I want to do yeah yeah good luck keeping up with her on a horse too right. So, um, yeah, so... All here in Michigan? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then we, uh, she, she passed away this year. And um, your daughter was shooting her gun. And my daughter inherited her gun. So it was, uh, oh, that, yeah, I love my grandma, but it's really cool to see my daughter pick up that mantle and run with it. Yeah. So. You want to, you know, it's like, you have a son and a daughter. hmm And I've got three daughters. Now, so I don't obviously have a son, but I want them daughters to be more badass. If, if I had a son, yeah. I want my daughters to be more badass than my son. <laughs> like, oh, you're a guy already. Now, I want I want her to be a badass. Yes. You know? Yep. That's, yep. That is so cool. And she's on that path. Got to 
you know, get a few, a lot more notches in that belt to, to get to Grandma Ruth level. But, right. uh, but, the, but she's on that path. But the, the goals there, the mm-hmm. family stories are there. Yep. And I think that's part of it. Yep. Like, you know, when you're sitting around with family, and you know, sometimes the kids are bored, but they hear some of the stories. And that resonates when the kids are little. Yeah. And they hear about the grandma. Oh, well, grandma did that? Like, my wife is a very, accom- well, she's a very accomplished artist, but she's also a weaver. Okay. Like, she doesn't sell anything that she weaves, but her grandma. Yeah, but that's, is, a, that's a unique skill. Yeah, her grandma's, or well, she's Finnish. She's 50, as she says, 51% Finnish. <laughs> How do you get Finnish in Germany to get 51? I don't know. Her, her 23 <laughs> me said 51%, yeah. and she's claiming it. But her grandma was a weaver, and when she was a little girl, she watched her grandma weave. And she has, and also, you know, Sue happens to be a, back in the day, she wrote programs in cobalt and all these oh, yeah. old languages of... They still use cobalt. In, in some companies. Yeah. And she literally could write her own weaving patterns. And I watched her on this weaving loom, like... Thrown, through, you know, the pedals going and the wharf and the waft going through. She could write. She could write a program and put your name hmm. in a piece of cloth. But she got it because it wasn't because she wanted to be a weaver. She watched her grandma weave. Ah, so and she's like, inherited. That. I got. I got to do that. I yeah. if my grandma wove, I could weave. And that's the kind of thing you're hoping for, like. And your daughters pick up that? Nope. <laughs> Maybe the granddaughters. Maybe the, I, I'll bet you any money. Yeah. One of them. My granddaughter will watch her grandma yep. weaving, just yep. like Sue watched her grandma weaving. Yep. So like, I want to do that. And that's like your daughter. Yeah. You want her to be like your mom. My grandma. Yeah. Your, yeah, your grandma. Yeah. Brother. Yeah. My mom is just a, a very sweet. Sunday school type <laughs> but, keeper. But she's yeah. not she's, I would not have used that uh, to describe <laughs> my mother earlier. It's very smart, very sweet, but not, uh, yeah, she's not driving a semi anytime soon right. or shooting a gun. So, but yeah, no, so that was, uh, that was pretty special. I sent that, that to you and, and you were nice enough to, to post on yours because it was just, it was a super proud day. Oh, it was God. her second. You see the smile on her face. Yeah. Yeah, it was her second wild bird, but the first with that gun, and just to have that all come together was uh, was pretty cool. And it was in a spot where I know my grandpa used to hunt a lot. Um, yeah. Not in that exact spot, but that in that yeah. area. Right. Right. So it just was, it just uh, kind of brings that whole thing together. It does. Yeah. It does. I think I, I said this with a when I did a podcast a couple of weeks ago with Bob St. Pierre. I had an old gun that I unscrewed the stock plate, mm-hmm. and I found a, I think it was a hunting license, This and I, I never kept it. So the guns that my, I got four grandkids now, and two of them I already got guns assigned to. The other two I haven't figured out which guns, mm-hmm. but I'm going to get my own stationary. On top, I have, I have hunting licenses back from Illinois from 72 on. Oh, do you? <clears throat> and I'm going to put those into the stock of the gun. Mm-hmm. That the gun, you know, the, the butt covers up. Yep. And I told my daughters, I said, you can't tell your kids while I'm alive that, right, that, that there's there. going to be a note yeah. in that gun stock along with one of my old hunting licenses. Because it's all you kind of want. You just like, if they do it, they do it. If they don't, they don't. But if they do it, it would be so cool. Could you imagine if your daughter opened up no. that butt no. stock and saw a hunting license from your grandma? Yeah. It would be like, oh my God, I'm in it for you know. And it sounds like your daughter's in it forever already, but she keeps up with the boys. She outwalked her uh, her boy cousin who's two years older the other day too. So she's uh, she's pretty tough. She's Girl, pretty girls tough. are the best, really. Let's be honest. It's one of those yeah. things like I'm I'm proud of my son, but like when my daughter said that something, it it raises <laughs> that next level. It's like. <laughs> Well, yeah, Brody, you did it, but I expect you to do it. Like, right. Yeah. You know. you know, when your daughter does it, you're like, like, oh, hell yeah. Go. <laughs> go. Yeah. So was that the end of your the end of your season? Was Arizona then? Uh, well, I ended it in no, Nevada. Nevada. But, yeah. But, yeah, but the, the, we had one little adventure out in Arizona that um, the first day I didn't go to my buddy Spencer's spots because I'm an idiot. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> even though they weren't that much farther away. Um, I talked to the, the ranch guy and said, oh yeah, you can make it down that road. So I start going down this road. <clears throat> and like I said, my uh, 2001 Chevy Mini Astro van and uh, it's all wheel drive and it's actually, it's a lot more capable than you would think for. Um, but we started going up this hill and it's pretty hairy going up this hill. But I made it until I hit the switchback, right? And then the switchback goes up the up the mountain, mm-hmm. right? Like you're going this way, and it cuts back. It's going up the other way. Yeah. And of course, I did what any sensible human would do when they hit that switchback. Stop. No, I floored it. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking stop. There's no. no stopping. You gotta, you gotta try to make it up. So I'm absolutely hauling ass as fast as I can go. I'm going up this mountain, and things start going bang, 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 and like, oh, everything just comes to a stop, and I, uh, I can't go any farther. So I put it in park, and I say, hey kids, I think this might be a good spot for you to get out. So I have them exit and. My son says, hey, do you think we should get the dogs out of the dog trailer? I said, nah, they're going to be fine. I'll be able to go down to that switchback and get out of there. So I sent you a text message. <laughs> you want to pull pull that up? Well, let me... Uh-huh. Let me, let me take care of that. So as, as I got the kids out, I get back in the van. You know, like I said, I assessed everything, looked at everything, you know, what the bad part was is that we weren't even really to the really steep part and the really ruck, rugged part of, yep. the, of the thing. Um, but I get back in my van and I put on the brake and put it in reverse and I barely let off the brake. And uh, I'll let oh. you. Oh, that's not looking good. Oh. Oh. You know, I would call it, you know, parental negligence. <laughs> they were out of the car. I got, yeah, I got the, but still, you just slid backwards. For how long? A long ways. A long ways. <laughs> so like, I, I barely let off again. the brake. I watch it again. I'm like, you. <laughs> scared the shit out of me. You scared the shit out of anybody. So, yeah, I just let off the brake, and it, it just went. So I smash on the brake, and it doesn't stop. The, yeah, you're, you're... I'm going you're downhill. You're like a 45-degree angle. Oh, yeah, it's and it's steeper than it looks, too. The video does not do it justice. But you can tell how loose a rock it was on. Oh, yeah, you can hear it. Oh, and, yeah, and so I get down, and, of course, of course the trailer's jackknifed because I couldn't steer. Yeah, uh, that's very apparent in the, in the video. Oh, and so, you know... I always say to my kids, if you're going to be stupid, you got to be tough. Right. And I got out of the the van. I said, all right, kids, it's time to be tough because that was really stupid. Did you start humping the trailer? Uh, No. So what I did is, because I was jackknifed. Right. I can see that. It was like 90 degrees jackknifed. Oh, yeah. So I got out my two really long ratchet straps that I had. And it Mm -hmm. still didn't make it to the closest bush that kind of a tree. Um (laughs) And I had some rope, so I, like, tripled the rope because the rope's pretty thin. I got the dogs out, had my daughter take the dogs down the road, just get them away from everything. We don't need them getting run over by a runaway trailer. Right. Because they always want to be right by you, so they're underneath everything. What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. (laughs) So I I unhooked the trailer. Um, Well, I, I hooked the trailer to that tree. I was able to pull forward, like, I got... Move forward because as you can see, I'm wedged to that far canyon wall too. Yeah, but I had like an inch and a half, and I was able to pull forward that inch and a half, <laughs> and it was just enough to come on jackknife, just enough where I was able to get the trailer unhooked. Oh, so I backed down to that switchback, was able to get turned around, backed up to the trailer, had my son come around and put his foot on the brake. Because every time I'd put it in park, I'd slide forward literally four feet. Oh. So it took me like 16 Jeez. tries. <laughs> literally 16, maybe 18 times. I backed up to that thing, had Bertie put his foot on the brake, lowered the trailer on the hitch, and drove out. 
You call me a liar, right? <laughs> no, no I, seen, I seen the video of the trainer going backwards with the, with the van. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it was... Uh, it was really scary, but I was able to, I was able to get out of that jam. Did, did the kids say, "Dad, never, never again"? Or did yeah, they, they were a little jumpy on the way out because then they realized how scary things were on the way in. Yeah, you know, so we're all like really gun shy. See, again, you are never going to convince me to follow you anywhere. That's why you need to call Spencer. <laughs> he won't get you in these kind of jams. And that's because you went on your own. Oh yeah. Uh, Oh. Didn't take Brandon's advice. Didn't take Spencer's advice. You know, you know what this is like? <laughs> National Lampoon's Family Christmas. Yeah. Kids, we're going to go get a Christmas, Christmas tree. tree. Dug, right. it out, dug that out of no, my hands. Don't, don't worry about me. Uh. <laughs> and then wife saying, honey, uh, you know, she's frostbite. Oh, we're fine. We're getting a Christmas tree. <laughs> she's a beaut, Clark. <laughs> that's definitely, yeah. That, and the fun thing is that's only the top three dumbest things I've done in a car while hunting. So Yeah, well. I'm not going to tell you about the other ones well, on we'll here. Well, we'll yeah, save. We'll save. There you go. We'll yeah. save. Um, so I, I want to keep bullshitting after we. Uh... All right. Well, anyway, I can't imagine what else we could. Is there anything else we got to cover? Oh, I, the story I was going to tell you, I haven't even got to yet. Oh, Jesus. Are, you, are we good on time? I, oh, I got, I got time. Okay. I just might cut this into two parts. That's up to you. Uh, so the, the story I told you, like, if you needed a, a good story, growing up in Arizona, I had, we we hunted uh, short weekends. My dad was a pastor, mm-hmm. um, so we he always had a work Sunday, but had Friday off. So we'd usually go hunting Friday right so after we school. So weren't Catholic. No, we're not Catholic. No, nope. pastor. You said pastor. Pastor. Really. Yep. Yep. Well, if I was the son of a Catholic priest, yeah, that would not actually be legal. <laughs> It'd be a little, little awkward, right? right. I don't think they're into that. Um, <laughs> okay, son of a pastor. Son of Fridays pastor. and Saturdays off. Okay, let's let's so, finish it. <laughs> so, uh, we go to the place. I believe it's called Bloody Basin, and we left. Okay, so this story is from Friday night to Saturday night. And that's everything that takes place happens in that time. Friday night, we get in a, it's a really rugged, rugged area. And uh, we're, we had, my dad had this old international pickup. Like the thing was geared super low. I think it went like 62 on the highway is the fastest it would go. Yeah, it was a real truck. A real truck, right? Single cab. Mm-hmm. Always would bash your head because you, like it had no give. But we never got stuck in this thing. It was it was great. Um, so we get back in this area that that's pretty rugged. And uh, my dad's like, hey, guys, boys, because I met... I'm maybe eight years old. My brother's probably ten, um, so we're pretty young. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "All right, I'm gonna start getting camp set up. You guys just stay up here." You know, we had a little pickup camper on the back, um, so we're sitting in the in the front, and um, the truck starts to roll down the hill. <laughs> and my dad's not super fast, but he was able to run catch up to the truck jump in the cab and slam on the brake just before we hit this big tree at the bottom of the hill right so the, i see a pattern here oh yeah I yeah the familiar, apple did not fall i see a familial pattern here okay <laughs> did not fall far from the, the apple tree did not fall far from the tree no um so we get back he drives it back up the hill which is you know and uh we get up there, and so, of course, the first thing my brother and I do, like, we're not staying in the truck again. So, we, we're standing outside of the truck, and my dad's in the back trying to get the camper all unhooked and things set up. We figured out to, to wedge the wheels. He's got the dog tied up with in the back, and my brother and I are standing there, and in the headlights, truck's still running. It's like that cartoon where you see just eyeballs come across. Like around the corner, they all three sets of eyeballs stacked up at the edge of this tree, right? My brother yells coyote, jumps in the front of the cab, and shuts the door. I yell wolf and run around the back and jump in, right? 
So my dad's trying to figure out what's going on. Like I jumped in the in the camper and then got up to like the top bunk because like I think they're wolves, okay. right? We, we have to hide. Yeah. Gotta gotta get up there. Like I said, I was barely eight years old, and uh, I see my dad's starting to like trying to untie my dog Duke, who's a Brittany, um, and these these wolves like keep coming in like by him he's stomping at him scaring him away and like they're being super aggressive trying to get to our dog and kill it um this is in arizona this is in arizona okay yep and i say wolves because they're just right you know like i said i was eight anyway so he gets the dog untied thrown in the back of the camper jumps up in and shuts the door and no shit that wolf was right there as he's shutting the door could have been a red wolf yeah, we were not where we were. They're more in the um, northern. No, they're more in the southern part, like okay. where the Merns are. We're we're gambles, like middle central state. No red wolves. Bottom line is, you had canines trying to attack. Yes, you. yes, and some uh, wild canines. Yep, and we only got bird shot. So he comes back out of the the <laughs> camper with the bird shot, pumps three into one, and and they all they all run off. Yep. It, it was it was super intense and super scary because, like, like I said, a Stephen King book. Yes, because. I can still remember seeing those teeth, like, right freaking there as he's shutting the door. So we're eating eating our uh, oven-baked Red Baron Supreme Pizza. I can still remember what we had for dinner. <laughs> of course you did. Um, and we see this flashlight starts coming through the woods. And like I said, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, so it's super unusual to see anybody. Yeah. And so my dad pops out and... You know, stop this guy far enough away because there's a lot of weird people in Arizona. Yeah. Right? Well, because it's right next to California, so all the weirdos yeah. come over. And who knows? Right. I know you got a lot of listeners in California. Yeah. but um, And the guy yells out, he goes, did you shoot my dogs? My dad's like, no, I shot a really huge coyote that was trying to kill my dog. And he goes, no, those, those are wolf hybrids. Oh. So even though I was eight and completely talking out of my ass, I was right. absolutely right. Because yeah, there were these wolf hybrid dogs that were mostly wolves. That was he was just letting run free out in the middle of the desert. Oh my god! Like what? Who would think that's okay? But uh, oh. but he did that. Um, <laughs> so that was that was our excitement for the night. Um, <laughs> the next day we go out go quail hunting, and uh, your favorite thing. So we got into a nice big rattlesnake, right oh, by good. a oh goody yeah right by a right by a water hole. The thing is, it is rattling. My dog's Duke's running around it, you know, and my dad is is a good hunter but a horrible dog trainer. Um, so the dog won't come, and finally we get like the dog far enough away, and my dad you know shoots the snake, you know, cuts the head of it, and uh, fortunately I'm the younger brother, so he put it in my brother's game bag. And, uh, you know, had that thing like... Just, just in case. Just in case. Well, you know, it's, rattlesnakes are good to eat if you fry it up. But, like, the thing was, like, moving around on them all day. And, oh, uh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, then Duke went in the, in the pond there, drank so much water. Because, like, when you find water out there, the dogs just suck up yeah. all of it. Because by that time of the day, we had burned through all of our water. Um, and, uh... Right from there, you know, and he threw up everywhere. Um, right from there, we moved up the hill, shot a quail, and couldn't find it. We're looking around for this little quail. And the quail runs and stops on top of my brother's boot. And I shit you not, when all three of us stop and point our guns at that quail, including my brother, he's pointing down at his own boat. Yeah, his own boot. My dad's like, wait, wait, wait. You know, so fortunately we didn't blow his foot off, but it was uh, Jesus. It was awfully close. So we get done, we get get out of that, done with the wolf hybrids. Although we did see them the next morning because they didn't go back to their owner because they're just out they running feral. Because they don't care. Yeah, and so we decided that uh, <clears throat> there's a shortcut to get out of Bloody Basin on this old sheep herders trail. So literally, when we're when we're leaving. Out of this uh, this basin, my brother my brother is leaning out of the window with a flashlight because it's so narrow 
and we're on this edge of this cliff that goes down that he can see where, where the tire is and say, stop! And then go back into the... <laughs> All right, you have a death wish. Okay. It was, uh, I'm blaming it on your father. Uh huh. And so anyway, I wrote this whole story like you know you get back to school in third grade and like oh what'd you do this weekend? So I, I write this whole story out, and my teacher calls my mom and she says, you know Seth is has been known to tell some tales, right? <laughs> I, I tr- tend not to let facts get in the way of a good story. Especially, oh, you never young. want to have facts get in the way of a good story. No, no, especially when I was young. So she, my teacher, goes through all of uh, all of these things, and my mom had to say, "Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's all true." So like the rest of the year, I got away with complete murder, like because <laughs> I would just say, "Yeah, well, just call my mom; she'll verify." But so that was uh, oh, shit. those are the type of stories you're trying to avoid by. By having somebody that lives down there that hunts a lot, or like I said, I've never used a guide before. But if you're making a once in a lifetime trip to Arizona to mark, knock off gambles, See, I, scale I would burns. absolutely do that. Yeah. I would absolutely do yeah. that because I don't want to go. I was lucky my first couple trips to South Dakota. We had family friends, one from a church, and and from that it was just a string of connections. Yeah. But then when you start really wandering out of your comfort zone, yeah, yeah, I, I would absolutely do that. It makes sense. Um, it, and it's not like you're going to a high fence hunt. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm getting someone who says, hey. You won't die walk, off this cliff. You won't die off this cliff and walk these six square miles. Right. It's not like come over the hill. No. It's, it's, no, it's, it's just, it's, yeah. I've, I've, I've had... Terrible upland guides, mm-hmm. but I've had great waterfall guides because they know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. And I think that probably be, so. Your your guy in Arizona is probably top shelf because <laughs> he, because I I've had some I've had some guides for upland now oh, maybe three, and they were all well I better not. Hey, you know, we just better stop it right there and talk about it at the end. Yes. Anyway. Yes. But no, Spencer knows where the yeah. birds are and, and how to get there. And yeah. honestly, getting there is half the battle in yeah. Arizona. Because you can find yourself, as that video showed, Yeah. In like that, that's the best op- possible outcome from... I, I was in a place right, where I shouldn't have You can't really tell. I mean, I watched it go down backwards and jackknife. Yeah. But you're on some kind of a trail. It yeah. just... That was a marked Forest Service trail right. with a number. And, and you were like... Oh, it was not close. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it could have gone sideways. You know, had I... had I, You could have flipped over. I could have flipped over. Right. Yeah. All right. So, so on, don't do that, kids. On a cheerier note... All right. Anyway. <laughs> so that's my Arizona stories, Ron. All right. That was that was great. I am glad. I'm glad you came over. You've got me about... Uh, maybe, no, I don't want to say half in the bag, but we got a couple of hefts to drink. And uh, what do we not hit anything that you brought yet? Yeah, a couple things, but one's an IPA. So. Oh yeah, that ain't gonna happen. All right, everybody, love you guys, love you girls, and we'll talk to you soon.